and the next presenter Kijamu Amos and going to present on the topic factors associated with uptake of immunization for vaccine preventable childhood disease in a peri urban settlement a case study of Nasana municipality Uganda Dear Kijabu Amos. Okay. Yes, good morning to you. Uh, your video is okay and you are audible. Please share your screen with the presentation. Okay, your screen is sharing now. Yeah, it's shared. Please open the presentation. Okay. Is it okay? Yes, I got the screen. Press the F5 key or slideshow. Okay, it's very good now. You can proceed. Thank you. Okay, good morning to you. Good afternoon. Uh, wherever, wherever you are, my name is Amos Shijambo, a PhD candidate at Exera American University. Uh, my topic is about factors associated with uptake of immunizations for vaccine preventable childhood diseases in a peri urban settlement. That's the case study of Nasa and Municipality in Uganda. Uh, <clears throat> in summary, according to WHO 2020, the vaccine preventable disease burden is high in the world. world. And the immunization recovery rates have plateaued for the last decade. That's the last 10 years, no increment. And uh, according to WHO 2021, about 19.7 million children under one year did not receive the basic vaccines. That was in 1929. Yet childhood immunization protect against infectious diseases like measles, polio, and others. And actually, according to Sustainable Development Goal number three, uh, immunization is a very key intervention towards achieving health. Uh, despite the registered global progress in ensuring provision of child vaccination, difficulties still exist, especially on how to reach the most vulnerable, poor and disadvantaged population in the remote and in Islam communities, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa, in Islam communities are usually found in urban and peri-urban areas. In fact, in 2020, about 17.1 million infants did not receive an initial dose of DPT, point of lack of access to an immunization or other services. And the additional 5.6 were partially vaccinated. Uh, earlier studies had identified the low education level of parents, the culture and religious, religious beliefs, the age of caretakers or guardians, transport difficulties, long distance to safe facilities, some had difficult geographical terrains, accessibility to services, some are very mobile in refugee populations, uh, there is increased the negative messaging for the anti-vaccine sentiments and so many other issues concerning socioeconomic status and also the attitudes, attitudes of the parents uh, uh, towards the immunization. So what was the problem? <clears throat> uh, like in Uganda, when I reviewed the information, the immunization uptake for child vaccine preventable disease is low in urban areas in Uganda, that's according to NEPI. Less than 70% coverage for most of the antigens compared to required above, nine, above 80%. And especially where NASA and Spirit Force in Wakiso district, when the review was done 45, between 45 and 50% of children were fully immunized for the financial year 2017 and 2018 and the 2018-2019 respectively. And the national report showed actually 55% of rural and 67% of urban population 
we are fully immunized. So there is a problem. And actually, there has been repeated outbreaks of disease like uh, measles. And recently, we have got a, a circulating vaccine related poliovirus too in Kampala, uh, which was linked to uh, South Sudan. Yet, immunization services are free and available in all government and some private and the, um, some private for profit and some private not for profit. And there, are, there have been so many strategies, including radio talk shows to build on and help the social cultural issues, religious, and to help the parents make the right decision about uh, immunization, showing the benefit. And there so, have been so many mass campaigns and we have static and outreach programs. Yet, immunization coverage is still very low. That is below 80% uh, of what is required. So this study was descriptive cross-sectional design with mixed methods, that's quantitative and qualitative. And for the quantitative, we use simple random counsel, uh, sampling using the WHO 30 cluster sampling technique for EPI. And uh, a total of 344 parents of children aged 10 to 23 months were interviewed. And data was analyzed using SPSS version 21. And for qualitative method or approach, we used focus group discussion with the parents and also add a key informant interview uh, with the with the and the workers providing uh, information, the workers providing the services from the different LSA facilities and the district officials and municipal officials. And all these were interwoven uh, within the quantitative data during the discussion. Results indicated that immunization coverage was 90 for uh, BCG, uh, Penta 1. Penta 2, uh, Penta 3, and measles. Now, <clears throat> this will do, uh, seem strange uh, because for us, we are doing the, the community survey in the community. But when you look at the data at the LSA facilities, it shows that the, 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 the results are uh, slightly lower than this. This probably because maybe another issue came up during the, 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 the research that some people don't, the records are not well kept or well maintained in the facilities. That is one of the issues that we found out. Now, out of the 344 children surveyed, majority were male, uh, were female actually, that is uh, 50 whatever percent, 60% of them were in the order, um, birth order second, fourth, with mean and median ages of 16 and 17 months, respectively. When you looked at the social demographic characteristics of parents, 86% were female biological parents, uh, were about 95%. And those who were aged, uh, Below 45, actually, we're 96.5, which is which doesn't surprise because these were the parents. Catholics or Protestant, that's 32% versus 24%. And 86% of them were either married or cohabiting. Uh, there was significant association between uptake of childhood vaccination and availability of vaccines. That's at all ratio 33. Accessibility to immunization services uh, with all ratio 32. Communication between the parents and health workers about return dates uh, were also very significant. So the narrow hypothesis for these three factors was rejected and alternative hypothesis accepted because these factors were found to be 
independently associated with immunization uptake. However, uh, uh, other factors like belief in vaccine importance, attitude of health workers, distance from the facility, timing of immunization clinic, reminder for return date, side effects of vaccine, and the other and the uh, adequate information provision. Though these were uh, less than the p had a p value of less than 0 0.05 in bivariate analysis, uh, they were not found independently associated with uptake of child, humani child humanizations. And therefore, the null hypothesis is accepted. Other factors were not significant at all. So these are my references. And uh, as you can see them, I want to make a conclusion. The coverage rates were higher than those of national average, but relatively similar. Other studies, studies, study results from urban and peri-urban settings. And the healthcare service-related factors, uh, like uh, uh, availability of vaccine, communication between health parents or guardians and the parents, uh, I mean, and health workers were identified as being critical for improving immunization uptake. Uh, so there is a need for improved vaccine supply and communication about immunization services, which should be designed considering the local context in collaboration with SRAM dwelling communities. I want to say thank you very much. And that's my presentation. Thank you, Mr. Kijambo, for your great presentation. Uh, attendees, we are enabling the polling session for Mr. Kijambo. You can vote for Mr. Kijambo. Also, if you have any queries related to Mr. Kijambo's presentation, please post your queries in chat box. Mr. Kijambo, we have a query for your presentation. It will be interesting to know the null and alternative hypothesis of the study. Okay. He wants to know? Interesting to know the null and alternative hypothesis of the study. Okay. Uh, he wants me to respond or is interested because I didn't understand the question no, no, clearly. They want to know more about that. Is there any null and alternative hypothesis of the study? Okay, there are two hypotheses. The null hypothesis that there is an association between these factors mentioned and the uh, uptake of immunization services, childhood immunization services. And the, uh, the alternative, a hypothesis is that there is an association between those factors and uptake. So for the now, if the p-value is less than 0.05%, uh, it is accepted. But if it's above, uh, I, I mean, sorry, if the p-value is less than 0.05%, the null hypothesis is rejected and alternate is taken or accepted. Great. So you have another question. Uh, what is the sample size? What method was used for qualitative data collection? The sample size for for the, the sample size for qualitative data collection. Now, <clears throat> I had the two methods. That is focus group, um, and the key informant informant interview. Now, for the focus group, I had two focus group discussions, um, which were around, randomly selected. And each group had about eight. Uh, actually, the one had eight and the other one had nine participants. And those were the parents of those children between 10 and 23 months of age. And for the key informant interview, I randomly selected the uh, five LSA facilities where these services were, were being carried out. And we had the EPI focal persons, but I also had the, I purposely uh, 
chose to talk to the EPI municipal uh, for co-person and the district EPI for co-person and actually even the DHO of Waxford district. So those were the key informant interviews. Thank you so much. Great. Uh, so you have another question. It is clear that there are multiple factors associated with low vaccine coverage from your presentation. How much of the problem were related to the culture? How much of the actually? Uh, I didn't go into this one, but uh, according to, to what I know, uh, in in our culture, it has it has it has no problem actually. People vaccinate uh, from different cultures, but maybe the the, the issue was uh, which I saw was in the region but not in the culture. In some religious facts, some people wouldn't, uh, uh, they not want to vaccinate their children, but these factors were not significant. So that's why they wouldn't be mentioned here. Great, uh, so second one is, were there any innovative iteration that could lead to improved vaccine coverage besides availability and manpower later factors? Yes, they could be there, but in this study, they were not found to be significant, so I wouldn't mention them. But in the in the general thesis, um, of course, they are mentioned. But since they are not statistically significant, uh, I, I wouldn't mention them here. Thank you. Great. So you have another question. What were limitation both methodological and systematically? Um, the problem actually was uh, I collected this data during the uh, COVID era. So method methodically, there was no problem. But the operationally, I mean, uh, Sometimes I could do, um, I could arrange and like for the focus group discussion and the key interview and even the teams uh, during the questionnaire travel, uh, collecting data during question, I mean, using the questionnaire. But at that some point you may find that they say, no, 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 we are not allowed to do this and this. So there was a lot of issues concerning the approvals. Uh, but otherwise, everything went on very well. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Kijambu, for your uh, grateful presentation and answers. You can leave your email in chat box so that uh, other attendees can uh, raise questions to you if they have anything after conference. Thanks for your presentation.